In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to give you some tips on working with the basic title editing using the new Quick Editor available in the new version of PowerDirector. If you're an experienced user, you'll probably switch to the Advanced Editing option. We're just going to cover the quick one for those who'd like to know what the interface looks like and how to use it. What I have is a project. I have a video of a mountain and a lake, and we're going to add a title. I click on the T in the upper left corner. I'm going to go to the subcategory called plain text and take the easiest one and drag it down to any video track. Here it's track number two. To get into the quick title editor, I double click on my title in the timeline track. And here I have what it looks like. You can edit the content of the title one of two ways. You can click on the preview screen and change it to mountain. Now I have it wrong there, but I can also click on the box at the upper left and turn my caps lock off key and retype it. And then even do another line called view. And there I have it. Mountain view. Now I can move the title with a mouse if I want to on the preview screen. It will align horizontally or vertically or both. I'm going to move it over here for now. Then let's look at the controls we have. We have the same kind of look and feel we had before. We have the font family. We, we can scroll between it. It will show every single font that you have loaded in Windows. If you want to find the font quickly, you just start by typing the first letter. I'll type I. That will give me all the ones in the I alphabet. And I'll use impact for that. Now you notice we have three kinds of alignment, left, center, and right. You only see these if you have multiple lines. I'll do a center here, or I could do a right. We'll go back to center. And let's make it bigger. Now when it comes to font size, you can pick any of the numbers you find here. But if you want something that's between them, you can type it in. You see I have a 36 and a 48. I can simply drag over, type 44, press enter, and I have my custom size. And I will center it here using the mouse. And we'll use center in both directions. So I can change the color of the face of the font quickly here by picking any color. Or I can also use select from screen to pick a different color that I might like to use that somewhere in my palette on the screen. I'll click on cancel to leave it the way it was. Of course, you can do your bold if you want, or you can do bold and italic, or simply italic, or turn them both off. Then if we look at the line here, this one is related to the amount of spacing between the lines. I click the down arrow, and I can enlarge the spacing. But you can go negative here, below 0, and tighten it up if you want. Let's turn my italic off. Then we have this control here that controls the spacing between the letters. This does not allow you to go negative, but you can go positive. And you can also type in any value you want. Instead of 0 or 5, I can simply type in a, a 1, press Enter, and it will slightly increase the space between the letters. Then you have a bunch of presets. There are actually 20 of them. To see all of them that come with, with this, you click the down arrow. And here are the ones you get to pick from. It's very nice on the preview screen. You can click on any one you like. And you'll see what it looks like on the screen. Now once you've picked a preset, you can modify it using any of the controls up here. If I want to change a preset at near the end, we have some that are actually gradient presets, which kind of look cool. We have also some, the last five, that have a box behind them of one kind or another. So those are your options. Let's go back to, let's say, this preset here. Now, if I want to change it, all I need to do is click on the color, and I can modify the preset here. We'll go back to a solid color. If you're in the advanced mode, you can actually add your own preset, but you won't see that here on this screen. The next are special effects. We have a few that we can use here. I'll click on fire. I have these six, and that's all there are. Then for font face, we also can change it. We can blur it slightly, change the opacity. We can impact the border. If I want to add a border, choose a border color and size. 
we can put a shadow on it and change the shadow color direction or size let's turn the shadow on here see it's on the right and I can change the distance of the shadow usually you want it pretty tied to the lettering let's let's take the blur off of it and there we have a sharper shadow we can change the opacity of the shadow make it a little more faint without blurring it and we could change the direction by either typing in a number using the up or down arrows or moving our little ball anywhere around our compass settings to change the direction of the shadow there's a blend we won't often use much in for this with titles but when I hold, hover the mouse over it you can see the different kind of blending effects that are available and position and size if you center it on the screen it's going to show the middle of the title on the XY coordinates and here it should be close to 0.5 on each of them and you notice it is if I move the title over here you notice my XY coordinates change or you can change them directly simply by typing in another number I'll do 0.5 here and there we have it now if you do the wrong numbers it will appear off the screen you can just reset it you can change the height and width using these tools here and if you want to just stretch it say horizontally or vertically turn off maintain aspect ratio and I can change the height so it's a little taller letters if I want to get it back to normal I click on maintain aspect ratio and of course we can rotate this again using either the tool or we can type in the number or use the up or down arrow to modify it so those are the basic controls for simple title editing using the quick editor and the newest version of PowerDirector. One footnote I'd like to say, I have never seen the kind of negative reaction to a new release of PowerDirector that I have with this version. I agree there are many things that they took away that we are used to that we need. But I'd encourage patience for users because even if they put many of these back, and I think some of them will return, it's millions of lines of code, alpha beta testing, so it's going to be a while before we have a, an upgraded version but i would expect we'll see something in the weeks and months to come that's a look at the new interface and the quick title editing in power director 2024 or 365.